SQL auditing is a feature that enables the auditing events and actions that occur in Azure SQL database. It allows you to monitor your database for potential security threats as well as track changes to the data and database schema. Auditing is a crucial aspect of database systems as it helps organizations to comply with various regulations and industry standards. Auditing helps you track data changes, user actions, and other events that are crucial to the security of your database. In Azure SQL, auditing is performed by creating an audit log. The audit log is a record of all the events and actions that occur on your Azure SQL database. The log can be stored in a storage account, blob container, or even an event hub. Setting up auditing in Azure SQL is a straightforward process. If you are familiar with on-premise SQL Server, then you'll realize that setting up auditing on Azure SQL database is way easier. You can do it through the portal or even using PowerShell. There are different types of events and actions that you can audit. You can audit database events. This includes events related to database creation, deletion, and modification. Data events such as data changes, insert, update, and deletes. Security events such as login attempts, user role changes, and login failures, such as table changes, index, and view modifications. Almost any database actions that you can think of. You can view audit logs in various ways. You can view audit logs through the Azure portal, using PowerShell, or even REST APIs. So what are some of the best practices for auditing? Ideally, you'd want to ensure that you enable auditing for all your databases in Azure SQL Server. Ensure that you choose which actions you want to audit really carefully. Because the more information you gather, then the more storage it will take up, and the more storage it takes up, then the more cost it will incur. Always ensure that your audit logs are stored in a secure location, and ensure that you use Azure Active Directory for authentication and authorization. Not only that you just want to capture the logs, but you want to ensure that you are reviewing your audit logs to detect any potential security threats. Now, let's head over to the Azure portal to get started with the implementation of Azure SQL Auditing. To get started with the auditing of your database, first you need to enable auditing at the instance level. So select the server, then scroll down to security, and then select auditing. It's important that you understand you can audit your server as well as your database independently. Each actions are different. So first we have to enable auditing at the server level and then we can enable auditing at the database level. So to enable auditing at the instance level, go to security, select auditing, and then select enable Azure SQL auditing. For your audit log destination, you can choose between the storage, the log analytics, or the event hub. You can store it in at least one location or hall three. So for this tutorial, I'm going to select storage and log analytics. So you're going to need to select your subscription and the storage account. The storage is just a blob location. So here I'm going to select the DP300 blob. In your case, you will not be seeing a blob account. So all you need to do is select create new. Now here on this page, you'll create your storage account. Specify the name, your storage account kind, your performance type, your replication option, as well as your TLS version. And then you'll just select OK. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm also going to select a log analytics. I have a workspace which was created already. So if you don't have a log analytics workspace and you want to create one, in the resource section, you'll search for log analytics and then you can create one. The steps are really simple. So when you scroll down, you have the option to enable auditing for Microsoft support operations. So if you click the information icon, you'll see that enabling this option will capture Microsoft support engineers or DevOps and write them to your selected storage account, log analytics or event hub. You also have the option to use different audit destination. So I'm not going to enable this option. Select save. So the save operation is currently in progress. 
So auditing has been successfully enabled for our SQL Server logical instance. Select databases, right? Select the database you created. Scroll down to security and select auditing. Select view audit logs. So here on the server audit, currently we are seeing only one log event. However, if we select load more, now we are seeing two. This is because we have two successful login events from the SQL admin user. It shows the time, the principal, the event type, and the action status. If you select database audit, you'll see that nothing will be in your database event log. So let's go back to server audit again. Now if you remember, when we were configuring auditing, we enabled the logs to be stored in log analytics. So here you have the option to access the log analytics. So we'll select log analytics. Now here on the log analytics hub, you'll see the same result that you saw on the server logs page. However, we are only seeing one event at this time because the log may take some time before it's written to the log analytics workspace. So you can change your time range from 30 minutes up to 7 days or even set a custom time range. You can always modify your query to show additional data or show less data. On the result set, it will show you more detailed information like the IP and even the application name that was used to access the database. Now we're going to enable auditing at the database level. So click the X to cancel or close. Click the X to cancel or close again. Now ensure that you are still on the auditing page or if you are not, under the security section select auditing and it will take you to this page. Now here you can just select this button to enable database auditing for the database. You have the same three options like when you are enabling it for the server instance. So you can select storage select your subscription subscription one and then select your storage account for log analytics select your subscription as well select your analytics workspace and then select save to view audit logs for your database all you need to now do is select view database audits so now I'm going to head over back to SQL Server Management Studio and carry out a few transactions. So just before I log in successfully, I'm going to enter a wrong password and a wrong username to simulate a connection failure. I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to log in successfully. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to create a table called employees in the sales schema, then insert a record then classify the salary column confidential financial and then run a query on the table. Now I'm going to insert the record. So it says invalid object because when you do not specify the schema name, it will be using the default schema, which is a DBO. So I have to specify the sales LT schema. So that is why I got the error. Now let's re-execute this. Classify the data. Now let's run a query on the table. Same thing here. I need to set the schema. Now let's execute. Now let's go back to Azure portal. So I'm going to do a refresh. So here we can see a couple of things happening. We have some succeeded and some failed. So we had two failures and two queries that succeeded. So now we need to see more details about what failed and what succeeded. In order to do this, you need to go to the log analytics. And then you'll get a more detailed query of what took place on the database. So let's scroll across. So as you can see, we have additional information about the failures and succeeded query that took place. So you have the event type, statements, principal name, the client IP, the application name, additional information, and data sensitivity information. So if you're supposed to expand the statements, You'll see the exact statements that we executed on the database. Now let's scroll across again. Now for the one that failed, you'll see that it's the one that says the employees, not the sales schema that employees. You can view the result in a graphical manner by selecting charts. So here you get a nice overview of what took place on your database. So let's exit the log analytics. Select OK. Now select view dashboard. Now here we have a dashboard that shows us access to sensitive data and Azure security insight. 
So here we have one confidential data which was accessed. So let's select this confidential data. And as you can see, this confidential data was accessed by SQL admin, the client IP, the type of information, the amount of query, principal information and queries. So this is a great way to track who is accessing what type of data within your database. So let's select close. Now let's explore the security insight dashboard. So here we have a nice summary of the actions that took place on the database. Now on the distribution by success, you can see who had failed logins, right? And who succeeded. So this type of information allows you to really spot anomalies within your database. As your SQL auditing is a crucial aspect of securing your Azure SQL database. It allows you to track data changes, user actions, and other events that are crucial to the security of your database. By following the best practices for Azure SQL auditing, you can help ensure the security and compliance of your databases.